lumetaparone is interesting. It also has an anti-inflammatory component based on some recent data. We know it as a 5-HT2A antagonist. It's more moderate on the D2, D1, and CERT. It has some serotonin reuptake inhibiting properties. This is a post hoc which looked at anhedonia in bipolar 1, bipolar 2 depression where we showed we could improve anhedonia in that group as well. So there's differences between agents. We've also seen improvement in anhedonia with cariprazine Indeed. as well. It's an agent that is a partial agonist antagonist of D2 and D3. Uh, you may remember my saying D3 is the most densely present receptor in that nucleus accumbens area. Yeah. And D3 has two locations, and they contradict each other. D3 presynaptic blocks tonic release of dopamine. D2 postsynaptic activation is proxy to increase in dopamine signaling in nucleus accumbens. So what happens if we use premipaxol? Mm -hmm. It's an anti parkinsonian medicine, also known as Mirapex. It is a D3, D2, partial agonist, it's actually a 70% agonist. In, its intrinsic activity is 70% uh, agonistic. And what do we see? Not only improvement in depression, and this is in depressed people who have MDD or bipolar, but we also see significant improvement in DARS, mm -hmm. so they're willing to expand more effort, their motivational mm -hmm. basis is stronger, mm -hmm. and also in SHAPS, so consumatory anhedonia. And something that you have made a point, it also seems to be associated with decreased inflammatory signaling mm -hmm. be be because D3, D2 modulation on microglia also uh, influences their yeah, phenotype. Good point. Good point. And uh, uh, in terms of what happens uh, with nucleus accumbens, uh, you see low activity pretreatment. Look at the red splash after treatment. There's increased activity in nucleus accumbens. Last is the difference between before and after, and it correlates with improvement in anhedonia. Uh, just to jump in there, but that's a really cool slide. And just a clinical point, I tend to use around one to three milligrams of premipexol myself. Yes. Um, some patients at the higher doses may be more susceptible to nausea. I still use premipexol quite a bit. Uh, just more for your interest, there's a combination pill being developed, which is the premipexol on Dancitron, and the idea was to try to push the dose even higher without the and nausea. nausea. Yeah, exactly. This is in fact here now uh, evidence looking at D2D3, and this is in the laboratory. These are animals. Uh, this is the sucrose consumption test. In animals, this is thought to index hedonic tone. And cariprazine, when First of all, when the animals are subjected to cuss, chronic, uncontrollable, unpredictable stress, they decrease sucrose consumption. They are exhibiting anhedonia. And cariprazine reverses that in that paradigm. Cariprazine, we looked at now in bipolar one depression and also in unipolar depression. And we have data to show that it is able to attenuate anhedonia. And that is in keeping with Vlad's comment about the D3 and what you discussed among other things. Let's not forget this agent also has 5-HT1A binding properties, which is agonistic. And something, Vlad, we don't talk a lot about is 5-HT2B antagonism. We talk about agonism in the sense of car you know, cardiac valves, but this medication has 5-HT2B antagonism, like veloxazine, uh, Quelbri, which is also shown to have some antidepressant properties. It may actually have a role in regulating inflammatory signaling, yes. 2B, on immune cells. Absolutely. Very and, and talking about uh, D2, D3, keep in mind, and you have just shown that, uh, Roger, the dose of cariprazine that seemed to be very effective in depression and anhedonia is at the lower end. Yeah. Because uh, keep in mind, low dopamine input to nucleus accumbens. You don't want to compete with dopamine. Right. You want to fill in empty receptors. So it's the lower range, dosing range, that helps with anhedonia and depression. On the other hand, if you overdo it, this is a cautionary uh, 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 advice here. If you overdo it with blocking D2, D3, you use something that is a conventional antipsychotic. In people who are successfully treated with SSRIs, they're now in remission. You add D2, D3 full antagonist. They become depressed. They have decreased rating of their wellness.